All right, cortisone's a big topic. We've all heard of it. Patients have either had it before, know someone who's had it. If you have an orthopedic problem, somewhere along the way, it's probably been treated with cortisone. So first and foremost, what is cortisone? Well, cortisone is a synthetic corticosteroid. It's something that our bodies naturally make in the form of cortisol released by our adrenal glands. It helps us be resilient in the light of stress during our days, but ultimately it can shut down reparative processes. So while it gives us armor to fight off the tension and stress of our day, we want those levels to go down so we, when we sleep and when we rest, we can heal our bodies. Now, cortisone being a synthetic version of that targeted into orthopedic conditions like shoulder pain issue, arthritis, other type of inflammatory conditions of the hands, fingers, wrists, elbow, and throughout your whole body can be very effective. And when I say very effective, I mean specifically as a potent anti-inflammatory. Now, it'll probably make you feel better in the short term. The problem really comes when you look at a bigger long-term picture. Cortisone, as potent as it is to shut down the inflammatory process, actually can have a long-term net detrimental effect because guess what? It actually shuts down your body's ability to repair itself. So your local immune system, which is responsible for repairing things and healing things, basically gets told by the cortisone, it's gotta just chill out. So it just sits back and relaxes. And sometimes it doesn't really get back up and start working so well. So the way that I think about applying cortisone to my own patients and in their own circumstances are, is the condition something that I'm really hoping for the body to heal versus are we looking for something where I want inflammation to decrease without the need to heal. And if, if that's the case, then I'll probably offer you a cortisone, single cortisone injection right off the bat. For things that I need tendon quality to be optimized for, I'm not going to necessarily want to give you cortisone. And, and I say this because some people come in, they want the relief of cortisone, but that again is a short-term mirage for long-term detriment. So I wanna make sure that when we use cortisone, we're not doing any harm long-term, that we're actually giving you not only your short-term benefit, but long-term gain as well. Here are the three things that I think cortisone would be great for in a short-term and the long-term. One is carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, if you have mild carpal tunnel syndrome, maybe from overuse or just sort of over time, you've developed some numbness tingling, maybe it's waking up at night, shaking your hand at nighttime, you're waking up with tingling in the fingers, usually these three fingers, or maybe when you're driving a car, that's a good opportunity to offer you a cortisone injection. It might help swelling in your carpal tunnel decrease, which takes the pressure off the nerve, which allows the nerve to function properly. And it also helps diagnostically to understand that if we shrink and decrease the swelling and inflammation around the nerve in the carpal tunnel and your symptoms go away, that shows me that the carpal tunnel syndrome diagnosis is confirmed. So that's really a, a nice approach to carpal tunnel. Now it still may be temporary, but it won't have a long-term net detrimental effect. Also, we use it for trigger fingers. That's where basically the tendon that's going up into the finger is moving the finger and the fingers are snapping, maybe locking down in a flex position. You can sometimes have to pull it out or it's just triggering where you feel it snapping. There's usually some pain right in the palm. That's where the tendon's actually getting thickened and caught in that pulley, that A1 pulley, which is like a series of tunnels that the tendon's uh, coursing up through as it kind of bends your fingers. And by softening and decreasing the tension within that system, it softens things up and it relieves the trigger finger. And that's very, very effective. For non-diabetics, we're talking about about 70% chance of cure rate. If it's if you're a diabetic, you're a little more likely to have it recur about 50, it's about a 50-50 chance. Um, so I talked to diabetics about that higher risk. And the other uh, thing that I would definitely use cortisone for right away, if the patient was interested in it would be a frozen shoulder. Sometimes people get frozen shoulder like after having another surgery and their, their arm is positioned in certain ways, but I'd say most commonly frozen shoulder actually occurs completely out of the blue. Sometimes you just wake up and you feel a little pain in your shoulder and you realize, oh wow, my shoulder doesn't quite move as much as it used to. And it can get progressive, it can get very painful. And when you look at a shoulder, which I infrequently have to do, but when I do operate on, on these shoulders, I look inside the joint. You can tell there's a lot of beet red inflammation inside of the joint that's causing tightness and contracture in the shoulder joint capsule. And so that's a really good situation where you can 
apply cortisone. It helps not only the pain, but to soften the tissues and let the tissues relax a little bit, which gives therapy a better foothold in terms of being helpful for you. And so over the course of four to six weeks, through a therapy course, while you're feeling better, we can stretch the tissues out. And that's really, really effective to get you through that process much quicker. Okay, here are three situations that I encounter frequently where I discourage cortisone. That includes people with intact rotator cuffs that have what appear to be rotator cuff tendinitis. That's where the rotator cuff in your shoulder starts to degrade a little bit. The quality is not great. It's sort of what we call a watershed area for blood supply. It's not great blood supply to begin with. And then with use over time, that blood supply can start to kind of peel away from that area leading it to not be able to repair itself. And so by giving cortisone into a situation where that's causing pain, it's just sort of like pushing, trying to push someone off the cliff. It's sort of like making it even harder for your body to heal those situations. So I try to discourage cortisone in those circumstances. It could lead to higher rates of tears down the road. It could even push you into a situation where you're more likely to need surgery. So I really try to lean on other modalities to help stimulate healing. That's like shockwave treatments. Sometimes PRP injections are appropriate, which is platelet-rich plasma, your own growth factors injecting into those tissues that are um, distressed. And then really re relying on a therapy program to help, help you through that process. In our practice, we've had a lot of nice success with doing shockwave treatments to help stimulate your body to kind of increase the blood flow, increase the growth factors that help lay down more collagen and heal things and get past this non-operatively. So other things that I wouldn't do cortisone for, tennis elbow. Very common, it's that pain on the lateral side of your elbow when you go to grab it, you know, open a jar, a doorknob, or even just playing tennis, although that's less common that we see people actually have this from tennis, it's really dysfunctional. And sometimes the natural history of that uh, disease is that it gets better over the course of time, but it might take you up to a year or more for this pain to go in. Now, during that time, sometimes these tennis elbow conditions in cer certain patients become extraordinarily painful. And so in those cases, we have to try to figure out ways of negotiating and navigating through that process while we're waiting for things to kind of resolve. That might include things like wrist braces, straps, like counterforce straps around just below the elbow to kind of redirect the force away from that origin of your wrist extensor, which is sort of like the epicenter of your where your pain is being generated. And other things like therapy or, you know, just rest. Those are sort of the mainstays. One of the more advanced things that I do is shockwave, and that helps, again, to stimulate healing in that area. Cortisone, on the other hand, as we've been talking about, will make you feel better probably for a week or maybe a month, but very oftentimes the pain will come rushing back, and guess what? Those tissues now, which already had a hard time, are now in a situation where they're even having a harder time because the local environment, your local immune system is kind of receding away from the area. And so cortisone, again, can put you into a position where you're less likely to improve long term. The third thing that I hesitate to offer cortisone for as a first line treatment these days is patients who have knee arthritis or even shoulder arthritis. Now, at some point, if our joints are wearing out, our cartilage wears down, we can develop narrowing of the joints where bone could even start rubbing on bone. Oftentimes, cortisone is sort of used or thought to be like sort of the next step before maybe you need a knee replacement or a shoulder replacement or, or whatever joint we're talking about. However, what we are now finding out about cortisone is it can have a detrimental effect on the chondrocytes, which are the cells within the cartilage that actually help maintain the cartilage or what, whatever cartilage you have left. So in some studies, we've now seen that long term, the cohort of patients who get cortisone tend to have pr more progressive arthritis over time compared to those who don't, which begs the question of whether, you know, cortisone is actually making it more likely that you'll need a knee replacement earlier. So I'm really encouraging a lot of my patients to consider doing things like PRP or platelet-rich plasma, which has been shown to have a better sort of overall approach, more regenerative approach to pain in the knee. Does it regenerate your cartilage to normal? No, it doesn't, but it can 
sometimes lead to some degree of fibrocartilage or some, some kind of tissue within the joint that now doesn't necessarily build your joint space back up, but it can help restore a bit more of a normal environment that decreases pain. And it's, be, it's much more durable on the long term in some of the randomized studies that have been done on knee arthritis and approaching it with either cortisone or, or PRP. So a lot more data coming out over the last several years, but certainly over the last five to 10 years that is emerging that it looks like more regenerative approaches to these arthritic conditions are likely more favorable than trying to give cortisone for that temporary relief of pain. If you have any comments or questions about the content you just watched in this video, leave your questions below in the comments. We're here to help.